This display celebrates 2023 Roll Gold Medal recipient Yasmin Lari. On the occasion of her visit to the RIBA headquarters, 66 Portland Place, we asked her to speak to our visitors and consider how they can integrate simple principles within design and architecture to inspire change in the world and build a better future. You know what I feel today? The world is so different when I was studying architecture. And also I feel that there are just so many different levels at which architects can intervene. And for me, of course, tradition and heritage have been very important for a very long time. And I feel that I've learned a lot from, you know, just being engaged with, with heritage. And uh, so, for instance, if you will see this particular monument that I restored or conserved in, uh, at Makli, which is a World Heritage Site, uh, you have to be very careful how you do it. You don't overdo it. You are very careful. And, but you learn about so many techniques that you wouldn't otherwise even know about. So I hope that, I don't know what you feel. Do you feel that you need to be more engaged with your own heritage? Because sometimes we feel that we know everything because we are in this contemporary world. But there are lots of little techniques that I think you can learn. And certainly the spirit of heritage, I think, is very important. So what do you think? Do you think that you have enough heritage within your own country that you can go and get engaged with that and learn from it to be able to apply it in whatever you do? Whether it's the medieval towns that you have in Europe, they are fantastic towns or um, the techniques they were, that were used that were very kind of sustainable techniques. And what do you think is the application today of let's say cob, for instance, or let's say the way that you use lime mortar and, or, or, or do you think that lime is important that you should be able to use it because cement now we know is highly energy consumptive in its production and we really should not use it at all. So my motto is, you know, like I say zero carbon, that means zero cement and that means zero steel. So are you willing to go that way? Are you willing to now look after the planet more than what might have been done before? So I think that's the question I'd like you to please, you know, reflect on and, and, and see what you think. There is uh, something that we call eco-urbanism, and that's very much, uh, you know, related to, to traditional urbanism, which means stuff vehicular traffic as much as you can? Are you willing to stop traffic everywhere? Or at least in major parts of the city where you want to humanize the environment? And for instance, are you willing to put lots of trees and vegetation within streets? Why are the streets only tarmac, tar, and why are they only concrete? We have, I think, to give up. So how far are we willing to actually look at these urban situations, see how we can actually transform our urban areas? I mean, if we are getting these heat islands and we get them in every city. I mean, I've come to London and it's warmer than ever before. It's getting warmer all the time. Why is it? Do we question it? Should we not question it? Should we not ask why there are so many multi-story buildings coming up all the time when they are so carbon intensive? We have to find mechanisms and that can be done by just using these materials and these techniques that were actually popular uh, during the, the Middle Ages or even later, I think. So uh, let's see whether you're willing to um, you know, stop industrialization or, or use of industrial materials all the time. I think that could be the key to us humanizing the environment and make it more comfortable for people to live in. Climate change, we know it's a reality. We will get more water than we ever did before. So how do we treat it? Do we just, you know, just waste it? Or can we use it for more plantation? I think architects really now have to intervene because I think that's the only sensitive design professionals who understand the environment, who know what it means, uh, you know, to design for human beings, for human living, and they have to be in the forefront. So are you architects willing to be up there and, and make sure that you change the environment around you? While I've been working, as you probably know, I've been working in really uh, very kind of marginalized sections in areas where people have been displaced or really literally have they have nothing. And that's where I think design comes to play because I think what art architects have been trained for is to be able to look at the context and to design accordingly. So, so far, uh, architects have been looking at the privileged and, you know, where Mostly, money is no object. You can order any kind of material you want. And there are enough uh, 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 enough building product 
companies that are offering you all kinds of different solutions. But I think the time has come and I think young architects do respond to all this much more than others from what I've seen, that they are concerned with the world today and the world is full of disparities. It's not only in the global south, but also in the global north. And so you have to find, because every community needs help in design. And I keep on saying this, that when, when the resources are limited, then you need more design, not less. That means if you're a good architect, that's what you want to do then. You want to be able to offer those services. So the question that I would like to ask you is, whoever is looking at my humanitarian work, are you willing to go into communities and offer them your help? But then it's not easy because if you're a young architect beginning to practice, how will you earn your money? You can't do it for free. It's not pro bono work for you and it should not be. So I feel that uh, that's where I think RIBA can play a very important role. Change is there very much so, but I think we need to see and I think you need to have voices to uh, set the directions in the way that the young people now need. And so my question to you is, are you willing to join your forces for asking for, for change? And I call it sometimes decolonization, but I also call it democratization. But that's what we need in a profession. We don't have to work for the elite. I mean, the fact that uh, I think it's a very brave decision that RIB has taken in uh, you know, awarding a gold medal to me. I don't know whether you know, but my best title is architect for the poorest of the poor. So I would never have imagined uh, this kind of an award to be given to a person like such as myself. But if they have done it, then that means they have the pulse on the, on the profession. They know that the profession needs a change direction. So they are willing to help, I can see. And, uh, but I think young people have to raise their voices. I think more women's uh, organizations have to come forward, like, you know, Part W uh, in the, you know, uh, Migration Bureau and all that, who are now working towards it. And why not? Because I think women do bring about a different kind of sensibility. And uh, uh, I wonder how many women are willing to raise their voices to say, yes, we are there and we want to do all this, but we need support. There's no harm in asking for support when you want to do something good for others. You can't do it for yourself, but you can always do it if you wish it for humanity.